Welcome to the show, folks. This is Wrestling Changed My Life. Here we go. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the, the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, I spent wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast. This is yours truly, Ryan Warner, coming to you from Chicago IL, the capital of wrestling. This is a very unique podcast that you're about to tune into, folks. It's our first four-person podcast ever. We have Jamil Kelly, Eric Guerrero, and Daniel Cormier all jumping on the line to talk about the Gator Wrestling Club, which a lot of you folks may not know about, but it was a senior-level club who sponsored Olympians in the early 2000s to mid-2000s, and it was one of the first to bring together Okie State and Iowa guys all under one roof. And there's, I'm not going to lie, there's some background noise, there's some babies crying, but DC, Jimmy and Guerrero tell some stories that I've never heard before and I'm sure are going to be new to a lot of folks listening. They talk about traveling to Russia, they talk about training with Terry Brands and the Iowa guys at the Gator Compound down in Louisiana, they talk about Jamil, or excuse me, DC taking a swing at Guerrero, cutting weight in a sauna, so many fun stories. I hope you enjoy it and again, forgive some of the background noise, but we were just having fun cutting it up. So I hope you enjoy it. Fan of the week is Paul Snell representing Decorah, Iowa. Thank you, Paul, for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. Last but not least, folks, this episode is brought to you by the Wrestling Changed My Life online store. Please go to store.wrestlingchangemylife.com if you want to support the podcast. We have podcast t-shirts, hoodies, crew necks, stickers, all proceeds. Go to support this wonderful podcast. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon. Let's give it up for the Gator Wrestling Club, Jamil Kelly, Eric Guerrero, and Daniel DC. Cormier. Peace. Really, what when I first heard of the Gator Club was 2004 Olympic trials. I was in eighth grade, and my birthday present was to go to the Olympic trials. My mom took me to the RCA Dome, and that was really your guys' coming out party, and the first time I had ever heard of it. Again, I was a young kid at the time, but, I mean, think about the guys there. You know, obviously, both of you folks, DC, I know Zadix, uh, you know, were, were part of that. Um, I don't think they made the team that year, but it was just unique to see Okie State in Iowa. And so let's just start, uh, Jamil or Eric, whoever wants to take this. The first time you were introduced to Jim Ravenick and heard the term Gator Wrestling Club, when did that happen? Um, I'll start. You know, when, when Daniel Cormier was, was coming out of Colby, Kansas and uh, being recruited at Oklahoma State, he had had that relationship with, with James Ravenick. And he had started, um, you know, discussing as, as Ravenick and Daniel became, you know, an intricate part with, with Oklahoma State, getting connected with Oklahoma State. John and John and um, Rabinac had discussed, you know, the possibilities of starting a, starting a club, you know, the need for another club to, to give athletes opportunities to train, et cetera. And it just kind of blossomed from there. It started with, obviously, the, the Oklahoma State guys and, and started to just, you know, morph into the other, the other athletes from other universities. And so it started there. I know he was pretty involved in DC's life, like as a father figure. Is that right, Eric? This Jim. That's Revenue. my understanding. That's yeah. that's my understanding. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Jim, as you got to know him, was pretty involved in everybody's life. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll let Jamil take that. You know, uh, because I, I, I mean. 
I don't know, Jamil, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, from the time, you know, Ravenek was in charge of, you know, Louisiana, USA Wrestling and, you know, doing their Fargo teams and all that kind of stuff. And Daniel was a kid that showed tremendous potential and, and was having success and didn't, um, you know, he's from Lafayette on the other side of the state and didn't necessarily have all the means to do all these different competitions and do all these, you know, things that all these kids do today as far as, you know, traveling all over the U.S. to compete. And, and Rabinac was able to help him uh, financially to start doing all these things and obviously led to him, you know, being able to, to go on to Colby and then to go on to, to Oklahoma State. And so their relationship went all the way back to high school once, you know, all the Louisiana USA wrestling stuff had begun. And then obviously their relationship became more than that, not just wrestling, but on a personal level as well. And that's yeah. pretty, uh, it's pretty special to have something like that in your life. I was, I was just thinking the other day, um, you know, how, how much money it costs to do the, the youth circuit and really get noticed. And if you don't have someone like that involved in your life, it can be pretty challenging. And so you know, he obviously followed DC throughout his career. And then, you know, when you guys were all training at Oklahoma State at the time, the de facto standard, and it had been for quite some time, was the Sun Kiss Kids. And so for you guys to, you know, to say, hey, we're going to go with this club by Louisiana, probably took some people off guard. I mean, it, it was kind of like the biggest underdog story of all time. Who's even heard of wrestling in Louisiana? Um, Eric, did you ever get any, uh, any questions around that, why you weren't wrestling for the Sun Kiss Kids or who the heck Gator was? Um, no, no, we're, we're talking – 20 years ago. So, so if I, if I, <laughs> I'm in no tr means trying to misrepresent and everything, I'll just give an act a factual account of how I remember it. Right. Okay. Cause we're, 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 we're reaching back. Um, I think we were all with sun kissed, um, in, in some way, sort of fashion or whatever. And, and when, when Jim started to kind of come around, you know, and, and visiting and I remember him saying, I'm going to start a club. And I, and I want you and Jamil and Daniel to to be part of it, and and I was pretty hooked up with Sunkist at that point in time, and 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 I remember that that call to art, you know, like and I'm not, and Art and Jim are good friends, so it's so it's not like it was a, a, an awkward phone call. It was just you know this this guy Jim wants to do this, and and uh, and I want to take a chance with it. <laughs> and and it was and it, and it was fine, right? And and you know, Jamil, me and Daniel, and just like okay, I, I don't know where this is gonna go, <laughs> you know. I mean, this is it's like you know, I don't know where this is going, but but um, I believe in this. I, I believe in in the in in, in what he's saying. I, I believe in 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 him. Um, you know, we had a me and me and Jim had a long talk one night, and and uh, not centered around anything in particular. Just I felt like I'm gonna take a chance on this, and man, and just it, it turned into something bigger than any one person, and really bigger than any one university, and and and, and you know, for what it was, I think it's it'd be real hard to ever replicate again you know, for, for, for Jim's, Jim's vision and Jeff Levitetz. I don't ever want to not talk about Jeff. Um, you know, it's kind of remarkable what happened. I mean, he brought some people together that never would have worked out together, that never would have been in the same room sharing ideas and, uh, and passions about wrestling um, had it not been for that Gator Club, you know, so. And when did sure the Hawkeye Jamil guys get, get involved, Jamil? Well, as it started, Eric's to, I'm sure he doesn't <laughs> want to just boast about himself, but Eric was kind of the, the big key component in it, in it all as he was already having success on the senior level. So him, him jumping over from Sunkist, he was kind of like the marquee guy <clears throat> when we first started. I was obviously, you know, I didn't have a stellar <laughs> college career. So me and Daniel, I, I was, I was lucky enough to be, in the situation where this was happening and, and I was getting to be a part of it. So, um, you know, Daniel and I, 
and Teague Moore, Mark Munoz, you know, obviously it started to, to morph as more guys started having success in college and then moving into freestyle. But Eric was the, was the marquee guy that it kind of started with. And, you know, as it started to, to grow with us internally from Oklahoma State, uh, then it switched over to um, the Hawkeye guys, which, you know, was the Zadik brothers at the time, of course, and Lee Fullhart, and then Joe Heskett and switched over to some girls, even, you know, Clarissa Chan started with uh with gator wrestling club as well sally 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 Roberts. i think that was our first girl with sally i mean look at right. the great thing she's doing for women's wrestling right now right ryan mm -hmm. i mean i mean she's she's changed women's wrestling Absolutely. so when we talk about and i don't want to speak for sally by any means but <laughs> i think we all feel this way to some extent some more some less would we be who we are today without that opportunity would, would we be this engrossed in the sport of wrestling from Sally having her wrestle like a girl foundation, um, truly changing the lives of girls, choosing to wrestle, you know, to coaching, to wanting to serve on the board at USA wrestling to, to all the things that everybody's doing right to, to Daniel and his success or whoever, you know, Yoshi Nakamura. And, and I mean, I can't imagine that some of these things, can't be contributed back to the fact that you got this opportunity to pursue this sport at this amazing level mm -hmm. um, coming from Jim and Jeff. Um, uh, you know, it just, I mean, like we talked about, you know, did, you know, wrestling changed your life. And I think the Gator Club changed a lot of people's lives. Yeah, it seems that way. And it's, you know, when you think about R RTCs or clubs, you know, uh, when I think of the Sunkiss Kids, I think of an awesome organization. Same thing with Titan Mercury, but I don't think of like a close family unit. I think of guys training on their own, and they come together at the nationals, and and they you know they receive some financial help, which is great. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the story is the fact that he had kind of like a mini compound down in Louisiana, and you guys would all go down there together, and you'd be sleeping on mattresses. And Eric, you mentioned sitting at the dinner table talking to Terry Brands, and that that to me is just unbelievable like to be a fly on the wall in those workouts and even those conversations unbelievable go ahead jamil what do you, do you remember those times i mean those are good times i, I think those are <laughs> those, those are fun times and and uh, i'd like to hear, hear jamil's perspective yeah i think you know we i think back in the day you know some kids used to have training camps down in arizona and, and you know, obviously fox catcher back in the day used to have it at the farms and that used to be kind of the norm and then it <clears throat> went away from that and and once gator club started that was something we wanted to uh, to kind of do more of bring guys that were part of the club together and train and um james james rabinak had started uh helping out at rummel high school down in 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 louisiana and i can't it's a metairie or kenner i can't remember if it's metairie or kenner i think it's metairie but anyways um so he was helping their high school out by the bed building this wrestling facility and so we went down there for our first camp to kind of for the groundbreaking of the new facility and to also train and and we drove we jumped in jumped in the excursion and, and drove all the way from Stillwater down to <laughs> down in Louisiana and you know just crazy stories you know we're busting each other's chops about this that talking about stories from college talking about life and everything in general and you know we we all stayed in in one of Rabinac's homes and it, it was really like almost like a training center type atmosphere as far as us all being in one place training and, and just um getting to know each other on on different levels and it, it was it was fun it was it was different it was crazy obviously you have a bunch of people being together that long, there was altercations at times, but more so there was, there was fun times and, and it really bonded us more. I think as a team, like you actually, you cared for the other guys on, on your club that were, you know, how they were performing and what they were doing versus, you know, you show up at a tournament and this guy just happens to be, you know, wrestling for the same we're in the same singlet or, or wrestling for the same club as you. So it was, it was a definitely a different type of atmosphere that I think was very special for us. Yeah. You know, um, 
you know, I'll tell, I'm going to tell a story because this, this story is going to, so Jim, you know, Louisiana is not necessarily known for it's, it's, it's healthy cooking, right? It's healthy eating. And uh, <laughs> we, we go down, we go down there for camp and uh, James, Jim says, uh, we're going to go to the store and get some food. I mean, you know, and we'll go to Costco and I think it's me and Teague or maybe it might've been Lee Fullhart might've been with us. And, and uh, we're walking around and I got a cart and Teague's got a cart and Jim's got a cart and whoever else was there, you know, and uh, <laughs> Jim comes around the corner and his cart, we're getting ready to check out. He's got like a big, big container of, of, of like cheat, like, like Cheeto puffs, like, like, like we go. They actually said, they actually said cheesy poof sauce. <laughs> and I look at him. And I go. Uh, and I'm trying to be real delicate. And Teague, in his, you know, in a, in a much more undelicate way, goes, "What are you doing? Like, wh- why, why, are, why, why are you buying those? I can't eat those." He goes, "Teague." <laughs> he goes, "Teague." How much cheesy poof weigh? He goes, he goes half an ounce. You ain't gonna get no way with cheesy poof. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, oh, he's serious. <laughs> he's, he's serious. DC, what's up, baby? <laughs> you you would come on on that door. You would come in. Oh, Mo had all the cheesy. Hey, Mo, Mo had all the cheesy poofs. <laughs> in Mo's room, he wouldn't share with nobody. He had a cart that was just like a cart that cheesy poof this big. And who then, share those cheesy poops? <laughs> hey, who? They were torturing dudes in that house too. <laughs> you remember? They were torturing dudes in that house, man. That house was terrible. <laughs> they were torturing dudes in that house, man. That was bad. That training camp in 04 was. That was a. It was a great training camp, but boy, that was that house, man. We all stayed in that house. Remember, we watched that fight, the boxing match. They treated those kids bad. We treated those kids bad, man. But we worked hard. We worked hard in that. We worked hard in that barn, and and uh, it, it was a good training camp. Gator Club was was that was it was as good as it came. It was fun. It was fun. So who was all at the yeah, house? Was it you guys? Was it the Hawkeye guys? Oh, was it Joe Heskett? Was it everybody? It was all of us. It was me, Guerrero, Teague, Jamil. Uh, it was uh, Doug Schwab and Joe Heskett and. It was, uh, I mean, it was Mola Wall. It was a whole bunch of college kids. It was a ton of people. We drove down to John's, uh, was it an excursion? A Ford excursion. We all drove down to Louisiana. Ethan, Ford Kyle. Excursion. Ethan Kyle. Ethan Kyle. Ethan Kyle. And, uh, Zach, was Zach Shane Esposito Roller. then? Shane Roller. Zach Espos- I think Zach Esposito might have been a freshman. Ma- I think Zach Mako- wasn't there yet. Was Mako there? Zach wasn't. For Full Heart. Because uh, that's when Brands was at Chatt- That's when Brands was at Chattanooga. So he had some of those guys. Um, it was so down hot. There training it was, as well. It was so hot and, and it was so humid and hot that we would we would open up the garage <laughs> door to try to cool down the room because the air conditioning went out and it would just make it hotter because the humidity would get in. And then we started to take ice baths in a big old garbage can. You remember that garbage can they had in the uh, on, on the <laughs> yeah. Stop it. No, they had a garbage can, a big old blue garbage can. That we would all jump in and take ice baths after practice because it was so hot. It was crazy. It was actually crazy. It was, it was nuts. It was, it was hot. hot. It was hot. It was hot. But I'm gonna go Ravnick. back to that. I'm gonna go back to that moose story though. So Jim Ravnack buys a big thing of cheesy poops, right? And, <laughs> and, and to this day, I swear, you get around this crew and somebody mentions the word cheesy poops. Hey. <laughs> He's like, I got to cut weight, and this guy's buying cheesy poof. <laughs> and that's when Jim said, he said, hey, how much does cheesy poof weigh? Half an, I mean, he's serious. Like, he can get in the way with cheesy poofs. Can anyway, you get, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, he's ready to really, like, fight Jim in the Costco. And I'm, like, separating <laughs> yeah. him a little bit. And, and uh, we get back to that house, and Mo Luol decides, those cheesy poofs are his. And God forbid, <laughs> you went into his little sleeping area and tried to take a cheesy poof. Oh, right? he didn't. He wasn't having it. Nope. And we said, Mo, you know, then he's got some veterans around. DC been on a couple world teams. Jamil been on a couple world teams. And Sam Hayes Winkle was there. There's some, there's some veterans around, right? Mo's kind of new kid. Just graduated college. And 
I said, Mo, man, I said that that you you already got a weight issue. This is not what you need to be eating <laughs> before weigh-ins. And let's just say there was an altercation um, because uh, when it came close to weigh-in time, uh, Mo barely made weight. <laughs> 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 barely made weight. And somebody said, I told you you shouldn't have ate all those things. <laughs> and uh, I, think his, I think his words were, I hope you die and I hope you die. <laughs> That was to me. That was to me. I, I'll just, I'll just oh, clarify. Before it. dinner, we, we just made way for the Olympic trials. And most of you do, I hope you die. She actually I, told yeah, me. It was me. It was me. Was, I hate you, and I hope you lose. <laughs> I hope you lose. Before we rush to the Olympic trials. Before we try well, to make like, it oh, no, you can't say that, man. You can't say oh, that. He actually told me I hope you lose. Take it back right now. Take that back. I ain't taking it back. No, take it back. I'm not doing it. Hey, hey, with the wall. Muhammad the wall was so crazy. He would say the craziest things. He would say the craziest things, man. That dude actually told Jamil he hope he loses. And you remember Jamil one time, so Jamil and I used to always be roommates. And there was one time my wife went for the first time, my ex-wife. So I roomed with her. Jamil got fifth place at the U.S. Nationals. And this dude actually blamed me not staying with him for him to get fifth place at the U.S. Nationals. It was awful. He actually, it was the first time that him and I didn't stay together for three years. And this dude, well, you decided to go stay over there. And now I get fifth place in the U.S. National. Hey, me and Guerrero got a couple new titles. Me and Guerrero had a couple new titles. See <laughs> Jamil sitting over there in fifth place. He goes into the world team trials as the sixth seed and has to wrestle everybody. I didn't even go. I was dealing with some personal stuff. I didn't go. And when I saw Jamil's bracket, <laughs> I talked to Mo. Mo said, man, Jamil going to lose, dog. <laughs> And let me kind of just go with this. You know what, oh. man? We're, we're, it's funny before you jumped on DC, we we're talking about oh, it was such a supportive environment. No, it was, it was, it was supportive. But, like, all right, so it was us against the world, right? We we really were against the world, but boy, amongst each other, we would say some horrible shit. <laughs> we would say some shit to each other. My God, one time I was when Guerrero started to move on from from, from wrestling. I was, uh, he was just coaching me and I was trying to make weight one time at a uh, hotel in, in Iowa and I couldn't, I couldn't sweat. I was like, I was done. I was at my wits end and, and uh, girl had started coaching me and I was okay with him. And as long as I wasn't cutting weight, I was okay with the new <laughs> frame of our relationship, right? Coach <laughs> athlete. I, I was okay with it as long as I wasn't cutting weight. But when I started cutting weight and he would start to bark orders at me, I would get really mad. So one time, I'm only about a pound overweight in Iowa, and Guerrero's telling me, you got to go run, you got to do this. And then finally, he just says, he's done. He's had enough. He's not going to, you're just not going to make it, whatever. That's me, a new world team guy. So I take a swing at Eric as hard as I can. <laughs> I try to punch him with all my might, and I missed. And then he, he, he steps back and goes, well, at least you're sweating. I was so mad that I tried to hit Eric that I started sweating in the song. I was okay with it until he tried to, like, make me do stuff in, in terms of weight cutting. But we supported each other. But when it came to uh, amongst each other, we'd do so. Oh, we would do some insane shit to each other, man. We, hey, you remember we went on that 18-day trip to Russia? When we did that, like, we were all great with each other, right? We, 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 were, we were caring. We made sure we all took care of each other. But uh, if you lost, though, boy, you heard about it. When you lost, you heard about it. <laughs> Woo, don't get rolled up. If you get, Sarah McMahon, you remember Sarah McMahon got fireman's carried by that gal in the... Uh, <laughs> some chick fireman carries Sarah McMahon in the uh, tournament. You're Regan. So it was your Regan. Yeah, so we're all laughing. Like, we're, we're all laughing at Sarah. Hey, Sarah, you got fireman's carried. You know the fireman's carry's coming. They put us in a dual meet with Russia's number one team and the number two team. Every Jamil got tech farming carry. You remember Jamil? He caught Jamil in the farmer's carry, held on to his arm. Dude starts rolling through and teching Jamil. So now I'm laughing at Jamil. I'm laughing at Jamil because he got farmer's carry. I go out there and wrestle. I get farmer's carry. We all got farmer's carry. 
we all got farmers carried in that dually. <laughs> Every one of us got farmers carried in that term. <laughs> laughing at Sarah. <laughs> laughing at Sarah. <laughs> we should have never laughed at Sarah, dude. That's some badass luck. Hey, that trip, though, that trip. Remember, you guys remember when we went to that place? It was called, I think it was Yakuts. And um, yeah, Yacoutia. they took us. Remember they took us to that guy's house? It was like the president. You guys were all like, we're going to go in this dude's. He has like an igloo. The guy had like an igloo. And it's like me, you, Eric, and Teague. And we're sitting on this dude's floor eating soup. But the soup had so much grease in it because it was like lamb soup. And then you guys are trying to convince me to eat the soup because it's going to be insulting to the guy's culture. You guys remember that? That was an Ulani day. This dude, this yeah, dude tries that was to with, give uh, us some sheep hoof soup. Maxine. <laughs> you guys were so mad at me because I wouldn't eat the soup. What was that, man? Like, what was that? you guys can explain that. Like, why would you guys be so mad at me because I don't eat that? It was horrible. It looked horrible. We're trying to, sure trying to embrace bad. the culture, man. man we were trying to embrace man. the culture. I'm not eating that. Did I didn't eat it either. <laughs> <laughs> you did, did, did Jamil, Eric, and Teague ate it. I didn't. That shit had so Teague. much grease on it. It was awful. Teague and Eric, they had dumplings and all that stuff. It was it was different. It was different for sure. Hey, I'd like I'd like I'd like to get your perspective, Daniel, on uh, on the on the on the plane flight when we ran out of gas. Oh my goodness! You guys remember this? Hey, we le- when we left on the last leg of our travel, we were going from the coldest place in the world. To the only place that's cold. What was that? Co- what was that place you know that we went to that was so cold? And then we went to the next part, which it was like minus Yacoutes. twenty degrees there. Yeah, Yacoutes. we were in Yakuts, right? It's freezing. We get on an airplane, and uh, first off, they didn't check no passports, no tickets, no anything. We just got on this plane, and then um, the guy that's flying the plane goes to the back no. of the runway. Remember, he dro- he went fast as he could, and he stopped and he turned around. And then he went fast as he could. I'm like, what the hell? Are they warming the damn plane up? And then finally, on like the third go round, the dude actually takes off. The plane's like, <laughs> the plane's like freaking shake. And I look over to the left, Guerrero's praying. Like, that's a, the craziest thing is that when you were praying, it made me laugh so hard but want to cry at the same time. It was the, that, that was, and then we get there. And you remember those two guys that like just kind of were on the plane? Were they on the bottom of the plane? We had stowaways. We had actual stowaways in Russia. And then we get to the tournament and one of them dudes was wrestling. You remember the old dude? Remember the old dude? That, that dude with that dude that stowed away and then Russell Jamil? Jamil just in there shooting on the dude over and over again. <laughs> Why you gotta bring that up? <laughs> you gotta Where's bring Jamil? that up. Jamil, break shoot, Jamil. Break Jamil, oh shoot. You were in my four points. Hey, Don't Jamil, shoot. No, Jamil was Jamil. at a seven zero back when kick <laughs> downs were worth one point. And there was no push out. You got Jamil, kept shoot, Jamil kept shooting on the dude. The dude just like tipping him off to the side. Tipping him off to the side. Jamil, don't shoot. Jamil's like, I'm already heading on the bad path, man. I'm just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> why were you, hey, Jamil, why were you shooting? Yeah, we can, and we can talk about some of my transgressions. Next week. Oh. Hey, hey, at this point, the whole crowd's laughing. Like, don't shoot. The crowd starts laughing. <laughs> Bad technique, the bad whole, technique, bad technique. The whole crowd, the whole crowd in Yakut, Baratia, Russia, is <laughs> yelling, like, what are you doing? He's not going to shoot. He's not going to do anything. We tried to do this stupid ass move. And Jay just kept shooting. It was like heading on a bad path. Oh, man. And that this was, was the guy who was stowed away on the plane? The guy, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> the stowaway got Jamil Dunn. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's hard. I, we're, we're we're chopping the story up, but it's it's hard to explain. Like we literally get on the plane, and then all of a sudden we see some randoms on the yeah. plane, and then we see the randoms in the tournament with like and they singlets were good. that they got. It, 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 I know we're not doing a great job of explaining all this. So we're Dude. kind of jumping all over the place. It's obviously funny to us because we can we can visualize it. We were there. It was wow. it was it was crazy. It was crazy. You were- and then we, and then we, we honestly like we went and like no, no lie, like Eric and I kind of like we almost like we, we bad, we represented the United States kind of bad in, in New York. We were, I, I pushed Hadari. Eric was crying because they cheated him. Like it was so bad the way we acted on those. Match. We acted bad in New York City, man. They cheated Eric. He had a bow and arrow. He turns the guy. They give him no points. They give him no points. And then um, they give him no points. And then uh. And and then um, he ends up losing by one point to the guy. That, the guy got like second, didn't he? He made the finals, or did he win? 
Yeah. He forfeited the semis. Yeah, but this dude was good. Eric, John's going crazy. Eric's staying on the mat. I go and push Hadari. It was it was all bad, man. We And the whole time, like, Eric's, like, pissed off. I'm next to the mat yelling, don't leave the mat, Eric. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell. I have no idea what the rules are. Don't leave the mat. They cheated. Fuck this. This is some bullshit. It, and we had some bad moments. But let me tell you one thing. We had a good team. We had a good team. We put three out of seven dudes from the Gator Club on the Olympic team because we all had each other and we worked hard and we trained hard and John made sure we, we were took care of and, and all the kids uh, helped us prepare and we all made the Olympic team and we all wrestled well uh, the whole time. You know, we just almost like propelled each other. Everybody talks about uh, in fighting and, and, and wrestling and everything. Uh, you need great coaching. You need uh, you need great coaching. You, you do. You do need all of that. But you also need those guys to to, uh, to uplift you. And that's exactly what we were to each other, man. We we freaking pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, and it showed. You know, by having three uh, three out of seven on the Olympic team from Oklahoma State and training together every single day. You know, we did it. We did it the best way we could. We had a good team, man. And uh, not Oklahoma State, but just the Gator Club. Because I think we made the team. I think Joe Heskey had wrestled in the two out of three. Lee Fullhard wrestled in the two out of three. And uh, who wrestled Kerry at heavyweight? Tolly Thompson. He was on Gator Club too, right? Yeah. Being there, yeah. Yeah. Like we yeah, had, and, like, then, every, and then we had every, Tegan in the mix and Mo in the mix. Like, we really, we yeah. really did have a good team. And we to this point, team. like, it, it really was. I mean, I'll never forget. You know, I was the only one. Out of, out of us three that lost at the trials and these two you know they're excited they're celebrating with their families they're on the olympic team and i'm over there just pissed like i can't be the only one i can't you be kill, the one bro. out of us hey, you and kill. You i was kill like i can't be the out. one do people forget <laughs> i was like i can't you be can the kill. one i can't go back to stillwater i was like i can't be the one but it was uh they were both there right in my corner helping me get right for that third match and you know, fortunately, it, it all worked out. It was, it, was, it was crazy because they had a big old curtain to separate the rest of that arena right. with where everybody was sitting, right? So Eric wins and makes the team two in a row. Uh, you know, we're going crazy. We run up to him and we hug him. And then I make the team. Jamil lost that second match or the first match, right, Jay? Second. The second match. And, then, you know, we, Jamil goes to the back with John and, and uh, Branch and, and all the rest of the guys. And, Eric celebrate, you know, I make the team, you know, we, you know, we're c c celebrating and, you know, with our families, with each other. And then honestly, man, we go to the back because early in the day, it's a lot of us, right? It's, it's 20, 12, 14 guys, uh, four, uh, 14 Greco guys and a whole bunch of, you know, I don't know how many girls were on the team at the time, but um, it's a bunch of us in the back, you know, and then we're all preparing for these two out of threes and it's intense and it's, 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 uh, it's crazy. And then we start making the team, right? So that, that area starts to thin out a little bit. And then I remember going to the back with Eric um, after Jamil was, was about to wrestle. Him and, him and Kale were back there, man. And you could see Kale was – Kale, full heart, had beat him up. I mean, he, he went through the fire to get on the team. And we all just sat in the back with Jamil until it was time for him to go. And we tried to encourage him. We tried to support him. We tried to just, like, you know – be brothers to him in a time where everything had to seem so difficult and so hard and had to be so scary. And I just remember our little circle back there. Who was your training partner at the time, JK? It was Zach. It was Zach, right? Yeah, it was Zach. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like we're all back there, me, Zach. Uh, we're just sitting on the mat waiting for Jamil's name to get called. Man. <laughs> and I honestly don't know if there was a time where I was more nervous. I was so nervous for him to, to get on this team. And when he did – it was like, man, we had – it was – it's honestly still one of the best – one of the best days of my life when we all got on that Olympic team. Because on that day, we did it. But then four years later, we had four opportunities, and we only got two. So, <laughs> it's a – that's a memory I always have. But it was intense, man. Him seeing them back there, I think they only had like three, three, three third matches in the whole tournament. Yeah, Dennis was, Hall uh, wrestled somebody. Dennis Hall and Paulson before me, and that's what made it worse, was they had that long overtime yeah. 
you know, dramatic match. And then I was on deck and then Kale <sighs> after me. It was crazy, man. That was like, that's one of the most intense uh, situations I've been in, even through all the fights. It's crazy. Hey, did you guys all won the U.S. Open going into it? That year we did. Yeah. We all won in 04. Yeah, we didn't win. Oh, Jamil lost in 03. Eric and I won. And Jamil had to go through, like, Tony Davis, Chris Bono. Uh, I mean, like, five NCAA champs, right, Jay? Like, four or five NCAA champs? McElravey. Yeah, McElravey and Zadig. But in 04, and, and Ryan, this was in 04, if you won the Open, you set out. So yeah. all three of us got to sit out, which was good and bad because you're, you're, you wait in and you don't wrestle on for another two days, two days? but you're watching the Thursday. tournament. Oh, shit. <laughs> we, actually waited, yeah. we actually waited in Thursday, didn't wrestle until Sunday or Saturday. So we're actually going we – were, we were going through training sessions every day. Like John was adamant about that, that we had to get real work done on um on friday and then saturday was more like you know and when i say real work i'm not talking you know live matches we did hard drill matches to simulate what we were going to see once we stepped on the mat so yeah man it was it was it was crazy it was too much time it was way too much time to wait too much time this we didn't do, it was a bit of a disadvantage like we didn't we, we didn't do anything it was like you go and just sit in the stands for two days trying to see who you're going to wrestle and the whole time I was just hoping Dean Morrison lost. You guys remember how much I was hoping Dean Morrison lost? I was scared of that dude. That dude used to push me, boy. Oh, my God. And then once he went to the training center, he became very difficult. Remember I used to break – I would break Dean Morrison with pressure. And then he went to the OTC and he got in shape. And I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to get this dude. And then he lost. So, yeah, he lost to Tim Hartung. And then, and then I wrestled Tim Hartung in the finals of the trials. And in the first two out of three, I gut-wrenched him and I popped his elbow. And the very first thing I did was take his arm and put it on his back and tried to rip that shit off. All the, <laughs> the, when his elbow popped, the, the, all the people went. They checked on him and everything. I got another takedown. I grabbed the inside of his wrist. I put it on his back and I tilted him like we were in college. <laughs> it's a move I had never done once in my entire college career. That was what Pat and Mark Branch did to me. I was like, if you've got a bad elbow, I'm definitely going to attack it. I ended up taking that dude both times. Did I take him both times? Well, be, because you attacked his, his arm. It's not I would have broke it. I'm telling it's you. Not, to that's that not fortunate like of you, but. Hey, to make Kim. the Olympic team. <laughs> hey, Eric, to make, the, look at me, to make the Olympic team, I was breaking his arm. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you got to just break it, man. I'm sorry. Just the way it oh, is. man. You know, yes. I mean, you know, I, I just kind of circling it back to, I think, right before Daniel got on, you know, we were talking about Sally and just all the people that were part of that club. And I think Jim Jim really wanted to keep it pretty small. And it was pretty small. Mm -hmm. When you look at the for a club of, of that, you know, he kept it pretty small initially and and – and we were just talking about Sally and Yoshi and, and Joe mm -hmm. and just, you yep. know, I mean, everybody that was part of that, you know, went on to do some good things. And I remember when Jim said, we need to bring those Iowa guys on board. Yep. And yeah. I was like, huh? Really? This is what, <laughs> what? we're doing? <laughs> this is what we're doing? <laughs> He's like, if we can get Terry Brands in here and, and Tom and those guys, like, it'd be good for you, Eric, you know? And I said, I'm not sure you haven't lost your mind, Jim. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he, he, he said, he said, trust me on this. Trust me. And I said, all right, I trust you. And you know what? Looking back on it now, at, at my age going, man, I'm, I'm real glad I got time with those guys because I'm not sure just because of perceived allegiances, you really, you, 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 you get that time, you know, I mean, those guys brought, those guys brought some things that, mm -hmm. that uh, we've never experienced that we've never heard. You get a chance to, to take a little window glimpse into their, into their, their, their mentality and their personalities and, and mm -hmm. how they do things. What's up, son? You know, I, uh, I actually still, when I teach my kids now, there's some things that I learned from Terry Brands that I still show, right? Yeah. When you get stuck on a high crotch or <clears throat> when you get stuck on a high crotch and you're trying to drag, We've always been taught to just kind of – John always had that strong back and the long arms so he could just suck you back in and crack you down. Well, not everybody has those long arms and that big back, so we couldn't really do it. Terry Brand started – Terry Brand's taught me, 
how to release with the inside hand, take the outside of the knee, close, knee slide back inside. Now you're back into your high crotch, right? And you're in your high crotch in a strong position to finish. And I'm still showing that. Like, that, that was Terry Brands. And, you know, it was good that those guys came along. They were they, the, the, I mean, and you saw the work that Lee Fullhart put in. There wasn't a training session that he wasn't all bruised up and beat uh, by the end of it. Unfortunately, I was the guy that had to wrestle him all the time. And I was, I was able to get him early. I was always able to kind of slick him and be a little too athletic for him early. But, boy, come third, fourth, fifth minute, I'd be huffing and puffing every single time. But that's why I did so well. And uh, you, you owe a lot of that to those guys and their mentality. They brought that same mentality into the Gator Club that you see um, in college. Was Coach Smith ever resistant to it? No, coach, coach has always been real open about stuff, man. I think people, I think people like, you know, John's different. You know, obviously there's a lot of things that he's different about, but he never, he never said, I don't want these guys in here. He, dude just wanted to, to train us to be world Olympic champions and him and Kevin. And it was, it was a whole, it was a whole collective that allowed us to be, you know, who we were, because again, Eric was the only one that was all like really crazy accomplished in college. Jamil and I were, a one-time All-American and a guy that didn't All-American, you know? So it took a whole group of people to, to elevate us to be um, Olympians and, and world medalists and, and all these other things. So um, it just, it, 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 he, wasn't, he wasn't against it. But it did stay small. Coach Ravenak had a, 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 a vision of what he wanted it to be. It stayed that for a while. But then when it started to get too big is when it lost itself. You know, it lost that family that family feel to it, and it just became another big super club. And, and sadly, the bigger it got, it actually was less successful because when we were nine, ten guys and a few girls, you had eight of the ten wrestling for Olympic team spots. But then when it became 30, 40 guys, those seven, eight guys wrestling for spots doesn't seem as impressive. So mm-hmm. that's where it lost itself when it got too big. I wish the Gator Club was still around, but – in the time that it was, I think it made a lasting impact on, uh, on, um, on the wrestling world. And, also, and honestly, you know, for what it, beca- what, it, what it came from. You know, it came from me getting done with college and uh, Jim, Jim Ravenack saying, hey, you got to keep wrestling. And him and John were going to start a club. And I was like, okay. I was like, that's, that's good. I don't have to go chase a club. Uh, you know, before we all just kind of wrestled for Sunkiss. And uh, or everybody was going to just wrestle for Sunkiss. And they started the club out of Stillwater, and it was just perfect. It was perfect to be able to be with someone that played such a huge part in my childhood and my upbringing and just a person that I consider my family. Coach Ravenex is a guy I've known for a long time, and I love him. And he provided opportunity and, and really did finance my entire Olympic dream. It wasn't something I ever could have imagined. Jim was the best man in my wedding. Yeah, he's the man. He was the man. He is the man to this day. I'm <laughs> talking like he's dead. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put Rabbit Neck in the grave. I'm trying to put Rabbit Neck in the grave, man. And, and, and you know, and, and, and Jamil probably won't, won't want to talk about it, but, you know, then this thing called Hurricane Katrina hit. Mm-hmm. And it kind of was time to repay the favor. That's crazy, man, that he did that. Jamil did that. Like, that's crazy that Jamil did that, right? Like, he did it and – what happened? Jamil Payne. Yeah, let's, just say, let's just say Athen. Let's say Athen is not Jamil's first child. It's not right. Jamil's Jamil first kid, man. Son, Jamil has a son out there. So after <laughs> right. after Katrina, Ryan, um, you know, Ravenak had a son, Chad, who wrestled at Rumble High and, and uh, his best friend growing up, uh, Jeff Slaughter. And, you know, they were trying to figure out what they were going to do. They still wanted to compete and, you know, finish out their senior year or, or their was it their senior, their junior year, their senior year of wrestling, senior. and didn't know didn't know when Louisiana was going to get back open and so on and so forth. I had this was right after the Olympics, so I was just in Stillwater helping out and doing the Cowboy Wrestling Club, and really did, not knowing what I was going to do yet. And um, you know, he started talking about them potentially moving to Oklahoma, and I said, you know, I'd be willing to to have them live with me. Um, and allow them to go to Stillwater High and, and, and wrestle and finish out their career. So I had uh, I went from a, a bachelor living by myself to having two two little uh, kids from New Orleans coming and living with me uh, for that for that next year. And it was 
it, it was good for me. Obviously, it, it made me mature in a bunch of different ways. I was now being responsible for them, and they were they were crazy. They were just like what you would think of some kids from Louisiana, that, you know, <laughs> raised a little different, and, and they 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 obviously could push the limits. I'm not their parents, so there, there was a lot of a lot of trying times that I had to deal with. But it was it was a great experience, and it was glad I, I was glad that I was able to do that for for Ravenac and his family. Hey guys, listen, hey. I uh, I got to jump off. I appreciate you guys letting me jump in here for a few minutes. I got a couple more fighter calls to make, and uh, I will see you guys later. But, yes, the Gator Club was great. I miss you too, my brothers. I will see you guys soon. Hope this quarantine ends. And, uh, Eric, we'll be seeing you on the opposite side of the mat with Ishmael and one of our guys going soon. But uh, you guys uh, stay safe, fellas. Hey, you Ryan, get us from that mid -cal. Thank you, you need to get us from that mid -cal tournament. I, I, call, hey, Shane, uh, call Shane on that. Hey, we're gonna no, we're definitely gonna get you guys into the tournament. We'd love to have you. All right, EG, you guys take it easy. Right. Take care. See you. Yep. Uh, Ryan, one one thing circling back to uh, kind of with the whole Iowa, you know, the Iowa guys being part of it. I think it was it was really good for both of us in that you know, kind of like Eric and Daniel both mentioned. You know, you saw their mentality and how they trained. They saw how we trained in it. And it helped us in training, like Daniel said, having to go with full heart. And I actually, I'll never forget this. I, I, I told you on the podcast when, you know, we were talking about my career, about, you know, when I wrestled Terry Brands at the training center in 2000. Well, he paid me back in 04 because John, I had to go with Terry. We were doing matches or whatever. And Terry's obviously in good shape and, you know, he's Terry. So I come out. I throw him, turn him, I'm up 5-0, like within the first minute. These are two, three-minute periods back then. And I, I was pretty good at Once I got the lead, I could, I could shut you down and control the rest of the match. Well, obviously, he starts coming, right? So it's 5-1, it's then it's 5-2, then it's 5-3. It's 5-4. There's like John, – John's on the clock, 10 seconds left. So you know, in my mind, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stalling out for 10 seconds. About 30 seconds later, he waits until I get taken down. <laughs> Terry takes me down. Time, overtime. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm like, you know, I was like, you screwed me. You screwed. Me. You know, I was pissed. We go into overtime. I'm done. Brands takes me down. I'm I'm toast. And I, I'm 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 livid. I'm pissed off. But you know, looking back at it, even even then, but even more so now, like I knew that that was good for me. You know, getting getting pushed into that deep water, and then also it gave me confidence when I was having to go against, you know, Zadik and Bono and those guys that I was like, I wrestled Terry Brands. Like I, I, I knew I wasn't going to go against anybody that can, you know, put on that type of pressure and, and, and just come at me that hard for, for six minutes. And it, and it gave me confidence and whether that was by design or not with John, I don't know, but you know, it, it, it worked, you know, it, it worked for me mentally, even, even in a, in a, in a loss in helping me gain confidence in, in my training, what I was doing. Man. To be a fly on the wall in those workouts, it's pretty crazy. Eric, who was your main workout partner back then? Oh, I, I kind of bounced around a little bit. Um, you know, I took one of those, one of those young kids there in Stillwater under my, under my wing, Ethan Kyle, and actually just talked to Ethan yesterday or the day before um so i'm mean, like we're talking about you know you build relationships and and uh, you know and and uh that but as far as you know what was brought in you know that bill was in the room a lot and um for some reason i remember wrestling frayer quite quite a bit i don't know what the time period was but frayer um came in at one point sam Hayeswinkle was in there quite a bit teague i'd say teague and jamil are really probably my my two main workout partners that's probably who i went with the most um you know as far as that you know from that iowa side you know um i remember wrestling schwab a little bit and and just kind of bounced around um you know got a chance to go with terry um some also and and, and enjoyed that um i i just think from a, to give it a little perspective you know, it'd be like Iowa and Penn State getting in the same room right now. Right, right. I think, I mean, just look at it from that perspective. If Iowa and Penn State got in the same room um, and trained for two weeks together, you know, um, what would that be like? And that's right. kind of what it, what it was. So when you look back on it, you're like, wow, man, that was – I mean, 
could somebody make that happen? Is there, a, is there a personality in the sport of wrestling that could make that happen? Because that's what Jim Ravenek did. He made that happen. Um, you know, so, I mean, you just look back on it in that perspective of going, I'm not sure I even, I even appreciated what I had as much as I do right now at the age that I'm at right now. So, um, you know, I, I do appreciate it. And I think the, the overarching theme here is just like your pot we talked about, you know, you know, wrestling changing lives. And mm-hmm. I'm not sure there's not a single person on, on, on that Gator Club at that time that would go, Jim Ravenek and Jeff Levitetz changed my life. And not there's not other people, and I don't want to discount that. Right. I just these are two people who didn't have to do it. It was not their job to provide the charity and the support to change our lives for the better. They could have went about their daily life and been just fine. Right. Right. Um, so it was out of the kindness of their heart and their good nature um, that we get to live a better quality of life. Pretty powerful stuff, and I'm glad we got to come on here and and cut it up a little bit about this. See, DC brings a lot to the conversation. Yeah. (laughs) But hey, we tried to keep it kosher and clean. That was every day. Like, is he going to pick on me today? Is he got something he's going to say to me today? Am I I the target today? You know, and uh, you you lived with that fear, so you just worked really hard to make sure you didn't get beat at practice (laughs) or say something stupid. That was was a legit – that was like a legit insight of really what it was like. Like it would just go from one thing to another thing. He's, he's bagging on you and he's bagging on him. And then if you, if you bag on him, then there ends up being an altercation. But, (laughs) but that's, you, you got, it's actually funny that he came in the way he did because that's, that's about how it was when we were all together. Came in hot. That's, that was awesome, guys. I appreciate it. On a lighter note, let me ask you this, because you guys are around for this area, era. It wasn't, this isn't involved with Gator Club, but growing up, Joe Williams was my idol. Like, he was an Illinois boy. He was everything. Now you hear a lot about JB, rightfully so. JB's right up there. In a hypothetical match, what do you guys think? JB versus Joe Williams. Man, I know it's tough to say, but people forget about Joe Will. He was unbelievable. So I'll, I get beat up on this because I honestly think it, w- it would be real – I'd be real interested to see how it goes just for the fact that I never saw anybody just out-wrestle Joe. Like if they opened up and wrestled Joe, I'd never seen anybody beat him. Now, if they just stood there, Joe would just stand there, and that was part of the issue, right? He didn't open up himself. Mm-hmm. But when somebody tried to open – up against him and then he was you know hitting his counter offense and everything I mean you saw it I think somebody posted that that video of him and Farnia it was just you just forget what he was capable of doing and that was always the thing right it was like man Joe could Joe could really be special if he just let himself be but um I I think it would be a lot more interesting than people think just obviously based on on credentials and also who Joe had in the world at his time too. I mean, there's, there's so it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like comparing Jordan and Kobe and right. LeBron, right. It's like different times, different rules. There's, there's so many different things that go into play, but I, I think it would, I feel like it would surprise people. Only saw Joe get beat because he got thrown. One time. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I look at his, some of his losses you know, remember we had to go to that clinch, right? And yeah. uh, you know, so TF kind of out, 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 upper body and Joe a little bit in some of his great positions, and you know, and and, and some of his, you know, getting thrown in that clinch and 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 uh, with one point takedowns sometimes and no step outs, it was tough to get to three points against a really quality guy. Yeah. Um, I'll just say that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking real hard in my mind, in the eye of my mind right now, to think about a time I saw somebody shoot in and take Joe Williams down in his prime. Jeez. I've seen him get thrown. I've seen him get thrown. God. Um, so, is, is, has Joe been inducted to the Hall of Fame yet? National Wrestling Hall of Fame? I don't believe so. No, I don't believe so. That's huh. a travesty. I mean. Three-time champ, multiple World Cups, multiple World Medals. I mean, from like 96 through 07, there wasn't many springs where he didn't win the nationals that he entered. 
whether it was college or yeah. U.S. Open, you know. Right. And I'm bringing it up because Joe, I had a, had a couple of youngsters ask me, who's this Joe Williams guy you keep talking about? And I go, are you out of your freaking mind? Like, this is one of the most dominant dudes ever. Um, I had to get your guys' perspective on it since you were around that time. I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be curious. I'd have been real curious to see how that played out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, this has been honestly a, a real – pleasure for me to sit and be a fly on the wall with this eric thanks for organizing with your mail with uh with daddy duties man you were uh, you were a pro with the mute and unmute man so thank you very much for making the time guys i appreciate yeah. it yeah thank you thanks, appreciate everybody. it and all great things must come to an end if you want to hear more from the podcast text wrestle to 555-888 that's wrestle to 555-888 you can also find us on instagram wrestling changed my life twitter Ryan underscore N underscore Warner, as well as our website, wrestlingchangemylife.com. Take care, y'all. Come. 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 Take care, y'all.